Nate is a very good boxer. It frustrates the shit out of me that he's not fighting. Why is that? Because I like to see him. I want to see him get in there. I want to see him make money while he can, too. Nate Diaz, one of the most vivid fighters to ever exist in mixed martial arts. His career embodies true American roller coaster with its infinite up and downs. And today, considering the latest news and arguments between Stockton's impudent son and the organization, we'll talk about five times when Nate Diaz shocked the world. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscribing to the channel so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Here we go. Anthony Pettis, UFC 241. After two mind-blowing fights with Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz didn't make that walk to the octagon for three years. A long-awaited return of Stockton's impudent son happened on August the 17th, 2019. The next opponent of an already huge MMA superstar was a flashy and recovered from a previous losses fighter, Anthony Showtime Pettis. His most recent fight was against Stephen Thompson, who he knocked out with a Superman punch. All in all, he was a favorite coming into the fight with Diaz, as nobody knew how much of an impact Nate's long layoff had on him. There weren't too many words said before the fight. However, long before the fight, at the times when Pettis was the champion, Nate said that Anthony doesn't deserve to hold the belt and promised to beat him up if he gets the opportunity. No, you know what, I, I'm not that dude, bro. Like, he was, he was talking mad shit a long time ago, four years ago. Um, now that I saw that he's, you know, toned it down, it is what it is, you know. If we fight, we squash the shit, I'm good with it. It's not <laughs> he seems to think you're jealous of him. Does that make sense to you? Why am I jealous of him? You got the covers of the yeah, no, 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 yeah, that was blown out of proportion a little bit, but, but uh, at the time, I was not jealous of him, but I was mad that they were hand just like Connor, Connor is like, you guys are going to just hand these guys, I did more work than all these guys, and then uh, they're pushing them as the guys, and if you're a fighter, and uh, and uh, they're pushing this guy as a guy, I'm I'm going to definitely step up and say, now fuck that, I'm going to catch him. Dude, so kid. that's all that was, and, that, and he, he should probably have, understand that, because that's what everybody in this fight game should be doing. At first, Nate started off slow, which is obvious. Stocktonian always starts his fight in the first gear. But then he began to literally tear Pettis apart. At one moment, he almost knocked Anthony out as he was right against the fence. Oh, he got him! Those oh, another knee for Diaz! Oh, huge Nate Diaz! Knees. Huge knees! Oh, right, Pettis is down. down! It was a surprisingly one-sided fight. As a result, the judges awarded Nate with a victory. A long-anticipated return was successfully fulfilled, and after such a spectacular win, he made a legendary call-out of George Masvidal. With this, uh, with this belt, I want to defend it against uh, Jorge Masvidal. Had a good last fight. Good last fight. All respect to the man, but there ain't no gangsters in this game anymore. There ain't nobody who done it right but me and him. So I know my man's a gangster, but he ain't no West Coast gangster. You know what I'm saying? Donald Cerrone, UFC 141. Coming into the fight with Donald Cerrone in 2011, a young and promising Nate Diaz was a clear underdog and nobody could argue that fact. At that time, Cowboy was seen as a tough opposition. He already had four fights in 2011 and his fight with Nate was supposed to be the fifth one. The organization had plans for him to become the champion and he truly deserved that. In those years, a win over him was an impressive achievement. Prior to the fight, the atmosphere was rather intense. The general respectful and peaceful cowboy was a bit turned up and wanted to punish the young boy for his disrespectful attitude towards his previous opponents. In his own words, he didn't get the reasons for such an impudent behavior Diaz Jr. was showcasing each time he was in the octagon. To give you a grasp of how much Cerrone didn't like Diaz, when he was asked by the journalist whether he was going to shake Nate's hand after the fight, he gave a negative response. Donald, uh, will you try to shake uh, Nate's hand after the fight? Will I shake his hand after the fight? Probably not, no. As for Diaz, in his conversation with the media, he, as always, was explaining his stance with the exact same thesis. He goes out there to fight, not to make friends. He's trying to push me in the bully's direction, making me the bad guy, but 
I didn't, uh, I just, I just walked the other way, and, um, I think he's just making a little more than it, what it was. Nevertheless, at the stare down, Nate was in his bad boy character and even punched a hat from the cowboy's head. It's unclear what was the reason for Cowboy to act differently in this fight with Nate, but that night he didn't look as he usually does. He didn't continue to throw leg strikes even though he saw that they were landing, didn't move his head properly, didn't go for the wrestling although he was good at it. Perhaps his busy schedule was the reason for that, but the fact remains the same. Nate simply ate him up in this fight, outstriking him throughout all the rounds. He didn't give Cerrone a chance and shocked the world once again with this spectacular performance. Diaz literally confused Cowboy with his pressure and infinite one-twos. As Bruce Lee once said, I'm not afraid of the person who knows 10,000 kicks, but I'm afraid of the person who knows one kick but practices it 10,000 times. Even though Bruce Lee referred to the kicks, Nate still might have picked up that motto and perfected his perfect hand combination instead. By the way, after the fight, Cowboy still shook Nate's hand. Michael Johnson, UFC on Fox 17. At the time of that fight, both fighters were coming off at a loss. A usually rough and talkative Johnson was surprisingly modest with his trash talk this time, as Nate was already getting a lot of hate because of his issues with weight cutting. The fans were happy with such a stylistically interesting fight and couldn't wait for it to happen. But anyways, as we talk about Nate Diaz, we couldn't go without a big headline or a conflict, and this was exactly the case. Not long before the bout, fighters faced off in the hotel. There was a small brawl between the teams in which fighters got a bit warmed up both verbally and physically. After this incident, Michael Johnson came out with a statement. And then um, he waits till a lot of people get around before he pushes me, which is really funny to me. So, you know, we both went our separate ways. You know, he kind of ran off and started flipping me off. But uh, there's no time for all that. You know, tomorrow we're going to fight. Tomorrow we're going to see who the real tough guy is. So you can talk and put on a show in front of your friends, but you can't carry your boys in that cage with you. And once that door locks, it's just going to be me and you. Although Diaz was coming into the fight as a huge underdog, he once again looked amazing in the cage. He was winning one sequence after another, pushed the pace and was landing more and more precise strikes on Johnson's head. Similar to his fight with the Cowboy, these one-twos alone were enough to put his battle with Johnson to an end. And again, Yo. Michael Johnson talked about the speed. I don't think we've ever seen Nate Diaz faster than he is tonight. Wow. Nate Diaz, first fight in 371 days. Oh! And again, he clips up. Beautiful. In conclusion of three rounds, Diaz took the unanimous decision win and delivered one of the most memorable post-fight interviews, calling out Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, you're taking everything I work for, mother I'm going to fight your you know what's the real fight, what's the real money fight, is me, not these... Conor McGregor, UFC 196 The biggest upset in MMA's history, even though McGregor was not in a hurry to answer the call of Stockton's impudent son and fight him, the stars aligned in such a way that it eventually happened. As Rafael Dos Anjos pulled out of the fight due to an injury, Diaz took the fight on short notice. The bout was held in the welterweight class. Despite such a short time frame before the fight, McGregor and Diaz did a great job in building up the hype around the fight with their trash talk. Here are some highlights of this legendary verbal clash. Now, as the fight comes closer, he's like a scared little boy, trying to pass the spotlight off, trying to pass the spotlight onto Nick, trying to pass the spotlight onto Hicks. And yeah, even that little skinny, they even that little skinny twerp. Too. Even that little skinny twerp that he does the open workout, he even tried to plug him at the last press and conference. he'll beat you. Ooh. Exactly, he's trying to, he's trying to pass the limelight. That, that's what a man does when he's scared. He tries to, he, he sh sh uh, shies away and tries to pass it on. So that's what you're seeing with Nate. But he's talked a lot previous, said he was going to do this and going to do that. Now we're up here, we're doing this, and he is saying absolutely nothing. He's sitting in a little shell. So let's see what he's got. He has a bully mentality until a, until a real man shows up. Like Mike Tyson said, he's scared of the real man. John Annie, fuck you. How about that? He really should be thankful and 
um, be grateful for this opportunity that I am giving him. You should be thankful too. You got a bigger check now than fighting Dos Anjos. You've been a little penny check with that. My guy. check, my check. Don't talk about money. You're broke. <laughs> uh, I could easily switch you up now and go put you back on that 20, 20 and twenty if you want. But all I want is a thank you or even a little dance. You're welcome. Even a little Welcome. dance. Dance for me, Nate. Dance for me. And don't look me in the eye when you dance. Be like he was a fat guy. That you got it all skinny. figured out, but who do you train with? He's a soft. You have no training partner. It doesn't partners. matter. You you have use, no again, you, again you you're trying no to pass the line. No grappling. I train with this guy. Look at him. Go video him. Get that camera away from me. You got tapped out That's by a two sign of a man who's scared for his life. Of. Man up and be yourself. Right. You're, so. like, you're like a gazelle. You're a little bunched up together hoping... Hoping yeah, that no you get spared. Uh, you knocked out midgets. I'm a lion in there. And I'm gonna eat if do you like breaking the rules? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I mean, I, I, I am the rule. I'm the only rule in this game. So it doesn't matter weight divisions. Nate said he was ready to fight at any time. But, well, he wasn't. He wasn't ready to fight at 155. He wasn't ready to fight at 160, 165. So we give him 170. So... Damn. They call every other day. I'm happy to go and do it. I'm not gonna lose it. no weight over no shit. I don't give a f and I said 155 from the beginning. You didn't take 155 though. You did not take did 155. Too. I did too. Initially, you didn't I take 155. Yes, Nick. I did. But that's cool. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Get day. comfortable. Get comfortable. 170. Get comfortable. 170, brother. Get comfortable. I don't give up. I don't give up. Either. I don't give up. Either. They're all on steroids. The only weight I care Everybody. about. Steroids? What are you talking about steroids? Let me talk. Let me put my name in steroids. I'm major against that. Don't put my name in the name of steroids, Nate. I'm not on no steroids. What the f are you talking about? Your two teammates were on steroids. That's your two boys, the scrap pack. Remember that? Wow, well, damn. They were. Did you know they were taking that stuff? Did you know they were taking that stuff? Did you? You're on steroids. Besides the striking trash talk, there was more to come. The fight started literally from the very first seconds. McGregor was going after Diaz for the whole first round and landed his best shots. It was impressive to witness how Nate ate Irishman's every single bomb and still stood on his feet, absolutely dismissing every critic's opinion and confident statements of the Irishman. Nate Diaz pulls off the biggest upset in the history of MMA. He took McGregor's aura of invincibility away that was around him for a long time. Already in the second round, he broke Connor and made him quit, earning a decisive win and shocking the whole MMA community. Oh, he tagged him. Him. Got him with the good one there. He tagged him. He heard him. Trying to get out of it. Connor's in serious trouble. Right now. That's it. He's got the chance. And with the rematch that happened at UFC 202, we witnessed the best dialogies in the history of the promotion. Leon Edwards, UFC 263. One of the major events at UFC 263 was the fight of the legendary Nate Diaz. The gangster returned after 589 days. His last fight happened on November the 2nd, 2019, when he lost to George Masvidal via doctor's stoppage. Now, he once again gets to fight a top five opponent. Nate Diaz made his return against Leon Edwards. A 29-year-old British fighter was coming into the fight with an impressive resume. He lost his fight against Kamaru Usman back in 2015. After that, the British went on a seven-fight winning streak and was confidently moving towards the title. Perhaps it's impossible to find a tougher matchup in this weight class. However, Diaz was unfazed. Moreover, the American was true to himself. He critiqued Edwards a lot before the fight, claiming that he got to fight a nobody. At the press conference, Nate was simply chilling and smoking, which was more than enough to win the crowd over. I'm pumped to fight a worthy opponent, and that's what I'm here for. I'm coming to win. So, um, I think skill set wise, I am leaps above him, you know, and I, I will show that come Saturday night. I know he says it's kill or be killed, and I'm here to kill, so I can't wait. In the fight, the MMA veteran displayed a true character and showed that he doesn't change over time. Despite a complete domination from Edwards, both in the stand up and on the ground for the whole five rounds, Nate wasn't even close to giving up. 
Literally one punch with one minute left in the fight was enough to make the crowd explode and almost pull off another upset in MMA's history. Even though Diaz couldn't finish Edwards, he once again showed that sometimes skills and physicality are not enough to get the win. It's all about the character. And Nate is one of the few old school representatives who has this trait. And that's the reason why he is so loved by the fans. It's the Nate Diaz Army. We're lions out here, my whole team. And I appreciate the love and support from everybody, the whole army, all the fans in the in the gear everywhere. And thanks to Arizona for the love. Nate's a veteran, you know. I hit him with everything. What the kitchen sink, so fair play to Nate, he's a soldier, and he gave my respect to that. Oh. Nate Diaz is a true legend. His name is forever written in the history books of MMA. It's sad that at the current moment he can't settle his conflict with the promotion and doesn't get the fight, but we hope that Dana White will find a proper opponent for the Stockton's impudent son very soon.